Okay, presidents. Let's say you are. <coughs> let's say one of you ends up. Well, one of you will. But let's say you're you've gotten the position of president, and now you've been added to the group chat with all the other London Uni Abacus presidents, and you find out that one of the presidents, one of the other presidents on that group chat, you fucking hate them. <laughs> and they hate you. And you can expect the rest of the year to be really difficult. Um, how would you behave towards that other president? Well, <laughs> Anyone can answer. Um, well, I feel like if it's just like the London Advocates group chat, you still you still like have a responsibility to handle everything in like a professional manner. So even though like you hate them and you like really hate their guys, you don't want to talk to them. You still have to maintain that type of integrity and like, you know keep yeah fake it till you make it. Keep up a good um, image of advocate. Yeah, I mean, um, well, there's basically. It's a working relationship, like you might not exactly have the friendship there, but it's working relationship. It's like the same thing when you put a group project with something you fucking hate. Like you still have to work with it because the course work depends on it. So, yeah, um, before, like, when I knew straight away, I would probably talk to them personally, like, via messages and, like, set boundaries straight, like, like, no personal, um, no personal um, intakes into like decision making. Yeah, set boundaries. That's why I would do. Okay, so we have an event, an inter uni event, and some extra tickets have been printed just in case any of them get lost. Um, you find out that a president from another uni is actually selling those extra tickets, meaning, which is not what you guys agreed on, because ticket distribution is agreed on before. Um, before the posts even go up, what do you do? How do you confront that president? Are we the only advocates I even know about, or is it the whole time? <laughs> <thing? laughs> um, well, I guess you could tell the other presidents if you'd like, but how would you approach the situation? Well, I mean, for this situation, so like the other presidents are like overselling the event. Hmm? So, so they're overselling tickets behind everyone else's back. I would say I would um, talk to that president first and ask him, like, what, ask him or her what they're doing. And the tickets have been sold. They've sold. No, like what? Like what like they've what sold, they've sold tickets behind everyone else's back. Yeah. Yeah. So now so, there's too many people going yeah, to this say, event. So for each club, okay. they have a maximum capacity. Let's right. say the ministry is 1.5k and then you print it, I don't know, 1.7k. And so there are 200 surplus um, tickets circulating around. And it's a little bit sold. What would you do? Yeah, so I would I would go up to the president and tell them, like, um, and tell all the other presidents as well, because this is an inter uni thing, and the club manager, I would also talk to the club manager too, that there has been a surplus, um, and see if there's any way around it. Um, but in caution of, like, future events, I would... Uh, Tell, have a meeting with the other presidents and see, like, put a warning to this president and this university. If this happens again, we would probably, like, leave them out from, like, future collaborations. And what would you do with the 200 extra people at your clubbing event? Would you, would you print a new set of tickets for the people who originally bought those tickets and so that the 200 tickets are not valid, or what would you do? I think it depends on how the club manager, like club owner, takes it as well. Um, worst comes to worst, I think we have to be like upfront, honest to them, mm -hmm. and say like there's been a mistake. We refunding them ticket, but then we can also like say, oh, for the next event, um, we can give you priority or like make like amends and like suit it towards them as well. Come to agreement. I feel like it's really dependent on if the. Um contact details of the people that bought the tickets are specified because if they're not then it'd be really hard to get a hold of those 200 ticket holders and like you know provide them with take like priority tickets for the next one mm -hmm. but if their contact details are provided then obviously giving them priority tickets for the next one would be the best outcome. If no one knew would you hoard tickets before you post it in effect? No. <laughs> What if you find out one of your committee is hoarding tickets? 
of releasing the form to their friends first before. Them. I would, oh, sorry. I would definitely talk to the vice president first because as Hayden said, it's kind of the group <coughs> to everyone. But like definitely contacting the vice president first, like like just like just to announce that like yeah, like we know what you guys are holding tickets and like make sure like don't do it again or like just prevent them from getting that form first. I think it's all right if you can just go up to the person, like president and EP, like sometimes their roles can be interlinked as well. So instead of, I personally would go up to the person and ask them like, are you doing this? Like before I spread it to like more uh, people as well, um, I would talk with it, with my VP if I am stuck and if I can't handle the situation on my own as well. What are grounds for blacklisting members from your events? I know uh, one of the one of the um, factors is that um, that you resell tickets like for a high price, you get blacklisted by that whole number of members. Sorry. If you resell a ticket higher than the original price, you get blacklisted. Is that true? How would you That's measure it? that? How would you know? Just go on WhatsApp and ask them the other ticket and if they sell it high. Selling a ticket. Text them. As a president. As I president, would, you would, would spend three hours like texting every single yeah. member. Are you selling? Are you selling? Are you selling? Are you selling? What I would do is, um, well. For example, if I were a member and I want a ticket, and someone was reselling it, for example, the ticket cost twenty quid, and the and the person um, on the other end said, yes, I would sell for twenty five, and me, obviously, I know this road. That's why, like, given that I don't want to pay five quid extra, I would report to the person. I mean, that's very natural. Yeah. I have a question. So, obviously, the boat party is the tradition of abacus, and let's say your biggest spender is running late but obviously the boat has a time as a schedule and they will have to leave the port so what would you do then um i don't think it's appropriate for like a big site like the user <coughs> to make exceptions just because they're big spenders obviously but you need to meet the minimum spenders that is very true um maybe just like open bottle service early and you know open the cash book <laughs> Yeah. Okay, yeah. this there's, there's a trick question. There's a villain's on boat party. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this actually happened. So with the boat party, all the staff who are going to be at the boat, the photographer, the DJ, the guy who operates the photo booth, they all have to meet at a different pier to get on the boat and set up everything early. Um, and then once all the staff are on the pier, then we move to the main pier where our members enter the boat. Um, we had a problem this year where the photographer was not at the staff pier before and the boat had to take off. What do you do? Do you sleep without the photographer or? Mm, to prevent that from happening in the, uh, like in the future boat party events, I feel like you would have to hire more than just one photographer. And, like financially it might not be appropriate, but that would be the safest bet to hire two photographers just in case one doesn't show up. I mean, um, Oh, it's the photographer's job to be on there on time. Like, you've got a job. Like, that's what you do. I mean, in this situation, you can't you just say... You've paid the deposit. Yeah, you've yeah, got a deposit. job. You've got to be here now. Yeah. Like, it's 30 exactly. minutes away. You can't do so, that. Yeah. Like, so, you I mean, there's nothing nothing that you can do to resolve it because I'm believing just waiting for the photographer. Like, the entire world of, like, what, 100 people, 200? Just waiting for one person. I'm believing that. So, yeah. The then again, the party can go without a photographer. You have your phone, <laughs> take photos, and yeah. I'm sure... Like, like for our society, we'll provide like disposable cameras for different years to take photos. Or the photographer could board on the second pier. I don't know. <laughs> Which that is what happened. Because what happened? There's only one pier. Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay. Let's um, let's do the Gen Sex and then we'll wrap this up.